Good afternoon, dear guests of this webinar. Today, I would like to share with you reasons why now is the right time to protect your legacy and become a global citizen. Most citizenship by investment programs are available to the family members of the main applicant. This means that investor can secure a better future for their spouse, children, and future generations. In a world of increasing globalization and pandemic events that we live in today, more and more people are seeing themselves as a global citizens of the world rather than as strictly national citizens. So why CS Global Partners? CS Global Partners is the leading legal and marketing consultancy firm based in London. We are an executive government advisor of several Caribbean countries and we specialize in citizenship by investment options in Caribbean countries, including very well known St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia and Antigua and Barbuda. We are proud to have an outstanding approval rate of our clients' applications, thanks to our compulsory and complementary KYC before proceeding with the application of our clients in order to evaluate our clients' best chances for approval. We are based in London, in Mayfair, a convenient area to meet, guaranteeing safety and confidentiality of our clients' files. We tailor a personalized solution for our clients' families based on their budget, time frame, and objectives. A Caribbean citizenship gives them greater freedom of mobility and a truly global lifestyle without any borders. Each application is supervised by legal assistants, including compliance team managers and a dedicated customer relationship manager, such as myself. Last but not least, we provide additional aftercare packages to ensure that our clients are assisted with any questions concerning their new citizenship. What are the worldwide trends of global mobility that we see today? Well, the rapid spread of the coronavirus has severely limited human mobility and profoundly disrupted the daily lives of millions of people and businesses worldwide. This pandemic shows how the virus profoundly cut into the relationship between citizenship as the guarantee of the state's responsibility for the well-being of its citizens and human rights and practices of solidarity. We noticed that nations worldwide rapidly introduced new changes to protect itself from other nations, such as restrictions on entry. Visa services are also being on hold and countries blocking specific nationalities from entering. A couple of months ago, we have seen that Russia was one of the first major countries to strictly limit outside travel for its citizens, not as an advisory measure, but as a new legislation coming in force. This affected the entire population holding Russian passports. Only citizens with a second citizenship or residency permit abroad were exempt from this legislation, allowing them to leave the country at any time. In this scenario, we see that obtaining a second citizenship transformed from being just a luxury lifestyle choice to an absolute necessity, being the only way to ensure the security and well-being for yourself and your family. A similar scenario was in the United States, which announced that it would not allow any foreigners who were physically present in the Schengen area in the two weeks prior to their departure to the US unless they're permanent U.S. residents or their family members. As the lockdown around the world eases, we can also see the negative effects protectionism for nations opening themselves to their neighbors. Scandinavian nations, Norway, Denmark, and Iceland will reopen their borders to each other as the coronavirus restrictions are eased, but not to their direct neighbors, Sweden, who didn't observe lockdown rules during this pandemic. For these countries, Swedish citizens proved to be a risk as they didn't observe the same measures in preventing the virus spread with the Swedish government refusing to impose rules unlike the rest of the world and Europe in particular. This pandemic demonstrates that actions or in Swedish case, inactions taken by governments have a direct effect on our personal ability to move freely even to neighboring nations. What are the challenges do you identify once the lockdown restrictions are over? Well, we can see 
that around 125 countries worldwide have imposed travel restrictions to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Most of these limitations target passengers, my apology, who live in or have visited the countries affected by the virus. That is, entry is denied to individuals who have traveled to places where the epidemic is widespread, including mainland China, Italy, Iran, or South Korea. It's crucial to note that these restrictions tend to target entire countries rather than the viral hubs. The queue at immigration will be longer than ever before, and this is what I expect to see. We are already seeing the China, Singapore, and South Korea countries that feel like they're on the top of their outbreaks, that the biggest worry now is new infections coming from outside. Korea is ordering all persons entering from US and Europe to isolate for two weeks, even if they tested negative for COVID-19. Those without a permanent residency are being sent directly to an isolation ward. Even when lockdowns in Europe are over and we start to travel again, countries will test at the border, which can take hours to cross it. The challenge is that there is a very thin line which exists between virus, virus prevention and discrimination based on passport holders. Definitely, we will see the need of more than just a passport. Some countries will not take the chance of testing at the border, especially if you're coming from an outbreak hotspot. Entrance will be refused unless you have a certificate of immunity due to the fact that you are recovered from an infection or because you have been vaccinated, if this is available, of course. Certainly, in the short term, travel will become more defined by purpose. Any business travel will need to be strictly validated as an economic activity with companies tightening the numbers of employees who travel for them. Countries will likely only open their borders where there is a merit and it's safe to let travelers through. This may mean temporary visas and much more documentation you will need to provide to enter abroad. This all suggests that second citizenship during post-COVID lockdown might actually be the only solution for individuals who want to travel without any restrictions and with minimum complications. The travel ban will also have a negative impact on the holders of the nationalities whose government didn't manage to control COVID consequences during this pandemic, even post-COVID times, as I already explained with the case in Sweden. Potentially, I believe that this will lead to a new client market, specifically individuals and families who do not want to be limited by lockdown travel rules worldwide. For instance, there are plenty of wealthy businessmen from Asia for whom easy access to Europe or US is vital in order to maintain their business activities. They do not want to face any issues crossing foreign borders based on their passport and whether or not their government succeeded or failed in fighting the virus, which is completely beyond the individual's control. As far as I'm aware, the vast majority of the existing citizenship programs require physical presence of the investor, which is not possible with the current lockdown. Why choose Caribbean citizenship by investment programs? Are there any citizenship programs that have not been affected and allow digital submission during the pandemic times? The primary motivation for a majority of investors to invest into a second citizenship is definitely visa-free travel. The investors can forget about the hassle, obtaining visas to travel and long processing times. Over 120 countries are unlocking their borders for the holders of Caribbean passports, including Schengen countries and the UK. Secondly, most citizenship by investment programs are available to their family members of the main applicant. This means that investors can secure a better future for their spouse, children, and dependent parents. Siblings can be also included in Grenada citizenship applications. Therefore, obtaining a second citizenship becomes not just a desire, but an opportunity to choose and ensure security for yourself and your family. The fastest and most affordable way to obtain a second citizenship is offered today by the Caribbean countries, including Dominica, Grenada, and St. Kitts and Nevis. 
actually, St. Kitts and Nevis was the first citizenship by investment country back in 2015 to utilize a digital system through which you can upload documents that, part, that form part of your application for the citizenship by investment. This is one of the ways in which St. Kitts and Nevis has secured its status as thought leader in the citizenship by investment industry, proudly holding a reputation as the platinum standard of CBI. Caribbean citizenship by investment programs are known for their accessibility, no interview and visit requirements, which is balanced by a strict due diligence policy. St. Kitts and Nevis is the only CBI jurisdiction in the world to have an accelerated application process, a premium process available for an additional fee that ensures the citizenship process is complete within just 60 days. The investor may oversee the process remotely and all the paperwork is handled by our legal team at CS Global Partners based in London. The passport is then delivered to the investor, so it's not necessary to travel to retreat it, which makes it a very convenient process from their hometown, even during this imposed lockdown that we see today. Another crucial advantage is the transparency of the due diligence process. Caribbean countries are committed to an excellent standard of due diligence to protect the integrity of its citizenship by investment program. And only, of course, individuals with no criminal record and whose funds have been legally obtained will be permitted to acquire citizenship in the country. A second passport from a politically stable country can be a life saving in the event of any kind of uncertainties in one's home country or during the pandemic events that all of us experience today when leaving one's home country may be crucial and critical. This type of insurance is priceless for all investors and their families. So what are the options of obtaining second citizenship? There are two routes which are available to obtain a second citizenship through the investment in Caribbean countries. The first option is the donation route, which is when the investor makes a one-off, non-refundable contribution to the government, and that contribution helps diversify the economy, improve services, and support large infrastructural projects on the island. For instance, in Dominica, an investment through a donation route starts from just 100,000 US dollars for a single applicant application. The real estate route is slightly more complex than the foundation route because the investor may want a lawyer to review the relevant purchase and sales agreement, or the investor may want to travel to the island to see the relevant real estate prior to the purchase itself. Finally, the investor must hold the purchased real estate between three or five years, depending on the chosen jurisdiction, and up to seven years, as we can see with the case in St. Kitts and Nevis. In my opinion, neither option is necessarily better than the other, but both offer different advantages. In general, based on my experience, single applicants often qualify for Dominican citizenship by donating to the fund, while big families often purchase real estate in the country, as this is more reasonable for them. Working with CS Global Partners. Before we onboard any client, we provide complementary internal due diligence process to ensure that the prospective candidate meets the program requirements. It allows us to prepare an individual list of documents to support the client's case and demonstrate his good character, eligibility to meet the program requirements, and of course, source of funds. Regardless of the industry you work for, you can tap into CS Global Partners experience and resources to strengthen your brand and reach more customers. We are always welcoming new agents from various industries, including banking, real estate, tax advisory, luxury lifestyle, and many other sectors to expand our existing strong network of B2B contacts across the globe. Another essential advantage of choosing our company is the transparency of all the costs via the use of clear fee schedules. Once we give you the exact fee schedule for a chosen program, that is the final price that an applicant or prospective client will have to pay. And no hidden fees are applicable along the way as many other competitors do. We accompany you through every step of the way from the first consultation until 
you will be granted with your citizenship. And even after packages, after care packages will support you. Educational support and marketing materials, materials will be given to you when needed, since we understand that neither you or your clients work in the immigration industry and are familiar with the Caribbean citizenship requirements. Conference calls via Zoom and video calls with clients are available and used by our immigration advisors for remote consultations during the outbreak. In conclusion, um, restrictions on human movement during the pandemic will remain for a long time a reminder that mobility should not be taken for granted as it can be easily swept away. This fact should suggest citizenship industry is thus focusing on passports as the ultimate insurance policy to make sure they will be able to travel to whatever virus free if a second spike in COVID infections trigger another global lockdown. While logistics are likely to improve in the coming months and thus may not be a long-term problem in the global investor citizenship market, critics say that this pandemic has posed a major challenge to the investor citizenship industry by putting most of its key selling points, mobility, luxury, tax benefits on the thin ice. I believe this is not the case and citizenship by investment will still remain a popular and reasonable choice for wealthy individuals, although demand side towards a dual citizenship has definitely shifted and not quite what it was been just before the pre-COVID times. This calls into the action and question the extent to which one could rely on countries as safe havens in case of a second wave of COVID-19 and how the decision towards second citizenship taken today can work as a plan B option in the future. It's crystal clear that the advantage of dual citizenship is the chance to live somewhere with the improved standards of healthcare. Many countries that offer dual citizenship also provide universal health care, which has a significant impact on the lives of individuals who need medical attention or are simply planning to retire. Second citizenship also gives you the option to turn your dream destinations into a place to call home. This can ensure that a travel of protection economic well-being and educational advantages will be available to you and your family for the generations to come. As there is no one glove which fits all, our legal team at CS Global Partners aim to find easy solutions to our clients' complex issues. We work out a personalized solution for families based on the budget, time frame, and objectives, finding the most cost-effective citizenship route to meet their needs. Thank you very much for your attention from myself and on behalf of CS Global Partners. We wish you to stay safe and healthy during these unprecedented times. Thank you.